All right, I wanted to go over the MT-866 features. Well, the first thing I wanted to show you is that there's two models out there. They're very similar looking, so I don't want you ordering the wrong one. Uh, the one on the right is MT-666. It is definitely cheaper, but it doesn't have some of the advanced features as the MT-866, like the low Z, uh, the live feature, uh, the non-contact voltage, the DC current and uh, capacitance, also the zero uh, out function. So some of these uh, ones that's really set apart, the 866, um, and it's only a few dollars more. So this is what you get in the box, a uh, couple of leads there, the cheap vagina leads. You do have a uh, thermocouple that comes with it. It's very uh, flimsy, um, the banana plugs. It's just not gonna hold up in the field. So if you're planning on using this for uh, temperature testing on a regular basis, you're going to have to find some other solution than, than what they give you here. And the features that you get with the 866, uh, you get AC and DC current, AC and DC voltage, the low Z, which in the manual they say it's around approximately 300 kilo ohms, and we're going to see about that a little bit later. Uh, resistance, capacitance, frequency, and temperature, of course. The microamps DC is not something we're going to use. You can't use the amp clamp for that. You have to use the lead, so that's useless. Well, the pros and cons, you know, first impressions of the meter. Um, it is really small, which is a pro. But the uh, LCD is hard to read, and especially in the corners you have shadows, and it, it just makes it difficult to read. Uh, there's a backlight, and the backlight is nice. You do have to hold the button down for like two seconds before the backlight is turned on. That's annoying, so I'll get out. Um, what, the backlight is nice, but I think overall I'd like just a meter that I could read without having the backlight in a well-lit space. You can see the size is considerably smaller than my field piece uh, meter, and um, the field piece has a swivel head. I've, I always like that. But both will have the dual display, so you'll be able to see voltage and frequency at the same time, which that's a nice feature. The bag is flimsy. I mean, what do you expect? This thing is, uh, you know, 40 bucks. So uh, what are you going to do? There's no padding there. Uh, if you're going to really use it, you need a better bag to put it in. And probably the bag is going to cost about as much as the meter itself. <laughs> Uh, you can see here what I was talking about. I mean, how is that going to last in the field? That's ridiculous right there. How can they sell that? Uh, I don't get it. Uh, the leads are, again, they're in you know, the El Cheapo, but they fit in the bottom. And I don't know. It's just, it's awkward. Maybe I'm, it's because I'm not used to it. But, you know, set it down, they're split like this. I don't know. It just doesn't feel normal. Like, for me, I, I'm always, I've always put the, the leads in the, in the in the front of my meter, meter so I'm really used to that on the flukes and the field pieces so I guess you could wrap it like that um, you know when you're putting it away they have the insulated tips but you can always uh, pop those off so first things first we'll go through the select zero button so you can cycle through the different uh, functions of any setting you're on as well as zero out the display Next one is the hold. You press and hold uh, to get the backlight, or just press once for the hold function. And I'm going to go ahead and measure the AC voltage and compare that to my Rigol precision meter. See what we got. Turn on the power strip, and we got 119.3 or 4, somewhere in there. And on the Rigol, we're clocking it at 119.26. So that's very accurate. I'm going to test the DC voltage using my regular bench power supply. And so uh, I'm going to kick it up to uh, 12 volts and see what we got. So you can see it's actually very accurate, 11.99, uh, and I'm reading 11.998 on my uh, power supply. So, yeah, that's, that's looking good. Go ahead and uh, check it at 1 volt and see how see how accurate it is. All right, yeah, one volt, yeah. So I'm really liking the accuracy on the DC voltage and AC voltage. I set up a fan so that we could test the DC current through the amp clamp. Uh, this was kind of a letdown. Uh, the 
the current, it, it doesn't read the same both ways. Uh, I do have another meter that's an amp clamp that is, um, that is very good at reading uh, current, and it uh, has no problem reading it in either direction. This one is way off one direction, and then the other direction it was really high, well, the other direction was really low compared to what actually the current was. So uh, I found that basically anything under 200 milliamps, it's really not reading properly. So if you want to read over that, then it, it gets it on all the ball, in the ballpark. Well, once you hit 300 milliamps, then it starts to read uh, pretty accurately, uh, you know, within you know, 5%. So that's fine. But uh, anything under that, just don't rely on it. I tell you, cut the 300 milliamp test short because running 30 volts into a 12 volt fan for a long time is not a good idea. I used a 120 volt AC lamp to test the current, uh, and it was in the ballpark. It was 463 milliamps, and this meter is reading 452. That's a 3% difference, so yeah, we're we're okay on that. So the, here's the non-contact voltage test. You just press and hold the button, and when you get close to the wire, it'll beep. Most meters, you don't have to hold the button down. I, I don't see the reason for that, but anyways. And the live feature, I'm not sure if it's going to really be useful for us, but it'll tell you which one is L1. So as far as the accuracy of the temperature uh, setting on this unit, uh, I got about 82 degrees uh, when I pinched it with my fingers, and so um, I tested it against my field piece, and it, it came out really close, uh, pretty much the same temperature. One of the reasons I bought this unit was because it said it was low Z, and spoiler alert, it's not. 825 kilo ohms is not low impedance. So... You know, they said it in the manual, they say it around 300 kilo ohms. And I guess in some universe, 800 kilo ohms is around 300 kilo ohms. But uh, the, if I'm rounding, I'm rounding to one mega ohm. And <laughs> one mega ohm is uh, some regular meters are have an impedance of one mega ohm. So we can't consider this low Z. If you compare it to my uh, fluke adapter for my field piece, then you see it's three kilo ohms, and that's what I'd expect from a Lozia uh, meter. For the resistance test, I used a 10 kilo ohm resistor. You can see it's a 9.81, and on my Rigel meter, it tested exactly the same, so that's looking good. And for the capacitance test, I tested a 470 microfarad capacitor. Now we're clocking in about 413 on this meter and on the Rigel. We're clocking in about 416, 415. So that's looking good. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this informative. And I mean, for 40 bucks, I think it's a very good uh, backup meter to buy just to have on your van just in case your main meter goes out. You could also use it for a second meter if you need uh, two different tests at the same time. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, post them, and we'll see you next time.